Hello and welcome to another edition of another book review. This time, I'll be, this week, I'll be reviewing Wonder Book by Jeff Vandermeer. I'll talk very briefly about the author, go into an overview of what the book is, talk about what I liked about it, what I didn't like about it, who I'd recommend the book to, and finish off with what I'll be reading for next time. Jeff Vandermeer is a fairly well-established science fiction writer. He's best known for writing in the, the field or the sub-genre of the new weird. So he's oftentimes compared to China Meaville um, and other writers who are in that that subgenre of science fiction. He wrote Annihilation, which eventually became a movie starring Natalie Portman a few years ago. Um, but this book is his illustrated guide to writing craft. So it's essentially a writing craft book that he covers a lot of ground, ground in the book, and it's mostly geared towards science fiction and fantasy writers. I think there's practical advice here for everybody, but I think he's particularly concerned or the readership is the demographic that I think would benefit the most from this is science fiction and fantasy writers. Um, and there are a lot of things to like about it. The one, one of the things that I did like about it was it's gorgeous. It's a gorgeous book. Anybody picks it up and looks at it for five minutes. There's a lot of art in the book. A lot of it is very different styles of art. Um, and I think that if you're someone who is uh, wired in a way that you get a lot of um, ideas, creative juices flowing from look at really good, looking at really unique and visually stunning artwork, then I, I think you're going to get a lot out of this. Um, he has essays from authors throughout the book. Um, some of them are, I think, a little hit or miss, but most of them are pretty good. Uh, there's a few standouts. I think the one he did with Lef Grossman about uh, re revising, I think, is one of my favorites. He did Ursula K. Le Guin has a piece on uh, what is the moral of stories. Uh, there's one from Kim, Kim Stanley Robinson where he talks about exposition. So throughout the book, there's there's a lot of different essays from a lot of different folks. Neil Gaiman has one. And some of them, like I said, are better than others, but I think that it, it gave the book um, more of a feel beyond kind of just Jeff Vandermeer's opinions on things, and I thought that that was, that was necessary. Uh, there's a section here that he talks about kind of the elements of writing, so point of view, characterization, things like that. I think that, that section is done really well, and that's broken down really, really well. Um, there's a part in the book where he takes his novel, Finch, and when, whenever you're write, reading writing craft books, it's always a gamble when people start using their own stuff. But he does an excellent job for this example of using his his novel and shows, here's what I was trying to do with the novel. Here are the four places that I could have started the book. Here is why I chose to start the book, where I started. Here are the, kind of the pros and cons of each of these things. And I thought that that was really fascinating, albeit be, maybe a little bit analytical for some people way to look at different areas and our different strengths and weaknesses to how you kick off a book and um, the need to be aware of what genre you're writing and not to set expectations strictly tied to a genre in a way that I thought that was really, really, really good. Like I really, that to me was like the standout part of the book was was that part of it where he took his his novel and he says, this is why I started the book here. And then he gives you, I think in a different different Part of the book he gives you the first page of that book and shows you kind of beat by beat by beat like almost line by line why he includes the what what he included on the first page and so those two parts alone i thought were the, the best parts there's an interview in the back of the book a really lengthy interview with george r. r martin you know depending on how much you like george r. r martin i like george r. r martin quite a bit and so i really enjoyed that interview with him um so those are the things that i liked uh, were there things that I didn't like? There, there are some things that I didn't like. I thought some, like I said before, some of the essays were a little hit or miss um, for me. I think you could have probably cut some of them. I think that there are some pages where he does, uh, maybe tries a little too hard to be, cute is not the right word, but but different and unique and, and kind of, I think, undercuts his points at some at some level. There's a part where he has a graphical depiction of the hero's journey he says, well, what if we took the hero's journey and, and twisted a little bit and used a, um, instead of a, a typical you know, Greek-inspired hero's journey, a Greek hero's inspired journey, what if we did a Greek uh, hero's journey with a, a luchador wrestler? And what, this is what this would look like. And the graphic he uses, to me, was like really confusing. And I, I think for anybody who is getting into writing, some of these things were maybe a little bit um, too confusing. There's also parts in the book where he, he kind of has a graph there's a page where there's like three different ways, three different, four different ways that someone could use dialogue to say slightly different things. And that kind of went over my head as well. So some of the humor that I think is tied to Jeff Vandermeer, 
along with Jeff Vanderbeer's voice, I, I, I kind of bounced off. It wasn't really my favorite part of the, the, the book. Um, I think there's a lot of good advice, and when other people are talking, I, I like the book a little bit more than when Jeff Vandermeer is talking, other than, like I said, where he used his book, uh, other than like the super practical stuff. Um, but I think that if you are someone who, and, and I guess the other part of I would have is, I don't know because there is so much book and there's so much advice and there's so many areas where I think he says, you can do this, but you can also do this, and then you can maybe try this. Um, I think if you're someone who wants something that's definitive, like if you're just gonna read one writing craft book, unless you are someone who is really tied to um, science fiction and fantasy, like you really want someone who's looking at it from that lens, I think they're probably better writing craft books. I will say uh, it is nice to have the book just because if you he does give advice on how to look at things that are fantastical and how much fantastical is too much. And he has one section where he kind of describes four different ways of writing um, that I thought was really interesting from like super, super sparse to super, super ornate. And I, I thought that was an interesting way of looking at things. Um, yeah, I, I think if you can stand Jeff Vandermeer's tone and his voice, then, then I think you're gonna be okay with this book. I think it's a lot of book. I think there were times where I thought it could be cut. Some of the writing exercises, there are writing exercises mostly in the back of the book. Your mileage may vary on that. There's a, a relatively long section about a board game that to me kind of goes on and on and on, and you're like, I think you could have cut this out. I think I understood what he was trying to do, but I, by that point I was trying to think of, are there places, because this book feels really long to me, are there places that you could probably have cut and not really lost a lot of the impact? And I think there are definitely places that, that he could have cut. Now, whether or not you wanted him to cut that, I guess is up to you. But I thought that there were places in the book that I, as an editor, I probably would have had him chop out. Um, and that was to me the, the one of the ones where I was like, this kind of keeps going on and on. And I, I don't know really the, the benefit uh, for the reader at this point. But overall, uh, if you're someone who, um, the, the part of the part I have a hard time with this book is who to recommend it to because I think if I was re introducing someone to to writing craft for the first time I would probably lean more towards something like plot and structure or even save the cat or say the cat writes a novel and for me this or story genius uh, I like writing without rules a lot I have issues with kind of the alcohol related jokes in that book so I probably wouldn't recommend it to a high schooler but maybe to so like a college student I think that book is good too this to me is a little bit more advanced. I mean, it starts off a little easier with some of the basics and then it gets advanced pretty quickly. Um, so I don't know, that's kind of my issue with it and it is quite long. I guess if you're using this as a reference book, the length of it doesn't really matter as much. But if you're using this as a, the basis of a course, I think I would have a harder time with it maybe. Um, so those are the kind of the pluses and the minuses of it. If you're someone who's read a lot of writing craft books and at this point I think I, I've read quite a few, uh, you're not going to be burdened by a lot of st the stuff in here. I think there are other books that kind of explain some of the concepts a little bit better. And there's some areas like, like, like I said, kind of something, his, his approaching kind of the different beat sheets that's a little thin that I wish there had been maybe a little bit more. Um, but overall, I enjoyed reading it, and I think there's enough there that most people will like it. And if you're someone who's visually, if you're someone who is... Um, much more visually attuned and you really do enjoy having those strong visualizations to bounce off of and to give you inspiration. I, I think this is the best writing craft book for visuals that, I, that I've ever come across. It's not even close. So that's really the definite strength of the book. If you're someone who really likes you know, nuts and bolts writing advice, there is some of that in here. There's a lot of that in here, but I also think you have to kind of get past like Jeff Vandermeer's tone and you're either going to like that or you're not going to like that. And there are some instances, and there's like kind of a running gag with like a woman in a, a penguin that kind of goes throughout the book, and you're just like, ugh, it just uh, it didn't really work for me as much. Like I said, when there were other people who came in and gave their opinions via the essays, I seem to enjoy those parts a, a little bit more, and I think the visuals help too to kind of distract you from his writing, which at times left me a little cold. That's Wonder Book by Jeff Vandermeer. Next come, time I'm going to be reading Tooth and Nail by Joe Walton. Until next time, uh, if you haven't already, please like the video, subscribe to the channel. Uh, I'll go ahead and uh, leave some links below if you want to check out my reviews of Writing Without Rules, Plot and Structure, uh, Save, the novel, Save the Cat Writes a Novel, and um, Story Genius. I'll have those below if you want to check those out. And I'll also put basically 
uh, everything that I've reviewed, Anatomy of Story, Anatomy of General, I'll put those down there too. So until next time, bye.